Okay, so welcome back. Uh, we'll look at the third module for the first week. If you remember, in the first uh, two modules, we had a brief overview of uh, what is this whole concept about. What what this uh, course will entail? We'll give you. A, I give you a brief uh, overview of. Uh, the material demand, the energy demand, the water usage and all that. Now, we will look at uh, some of the more, uh, this is again we as uh, if you have looked at the course information, this week uh, the whole first week is focused mostly on introduction and giving you some uh, background material, so that we can go into a detailed life cycle analysis exercise later on. So, as you know uh, for whole this the big picture concept is is actually what is defined as sustainability. Many times we use this word these days sustainability is a highly used and uh, many times I tell that it is highly abused term today you hear sustainability being used in all different, as different aspects and in some places people probably do not even know what sustainability is all about and but they still use that word. So, here uh, in this particular uh, uh, segment uh, this uh, in the third module for the first week. We will look at it what does it mean for engineers and we will come back to that again in later uh, weeks, but uh, kind of a big uh, what does it as an engineer uh, what does it mean? What is the meaning of sustainability? What, uh, what, what we are talking about? So, very basic is what is sustainability? What, what actually is sustainability? So, the sustainability means if we are meeting society's present needs without compromising the ability of future generation. So, me and you using our own needs uh, say if you want to make a smartphone, uh, but you, there are different types of smartphones out there. So, we can still make our own smartphone, but as you know the smartphone uses lots and lots of metals, lots and lots of rare earth metals which is from the periodic table and the, they, the quantity of those are limited. So, how our say grandchildren or great grandchildren can still have something similar to a smartphone or probably they will have a better technology out there. So, they should be able to meet their needs. So, that we should use the material because whatever is the material uh, uh, present in the mother earth has a finite quantity. They cannot be created only God if you believe in God only God create can create or destroy the material as we as uh, we say, but it whatever is there on the periodic table we can change its form. We can make it form from a usable form to a non usable form. So, we should not make it in a non usable form that will be not sustainable. So, we should keep it in the usable form, so that in the future generation should be able to use it as well. So, this was all basic uh, like a big, big overview of uh, the sustainability and it started in uh, the concept is started in mid 80s as you can see the definition comes from the Bradland commission 1987, which was a United Nations uh, 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 like a nations appointed commission and they wanted to come up with this uh, the concept of sustainability, because as our population was is increasing our water demand is going up, our energy demand is going up, our resources demand is going up and everybody wants to be more have a better lifestyle. So, that does also means that there is a lot of demand on the resources. So, how to make use of this resource without compromising the ability of future generation to do that as well. So, and as you know the as we humans are integral part of the natural world and the nature must be preserved. So, that is the another uh, concept uh, in terms of the we have to preserve the nature, so that uh, our future generation again can enjoy it. So, what does uh, in terms of uh, in terms of the solution. So, sustainability requires you to have uh, uh, meet the present need without compromising the future generation. So, how we can approach it. So, what the approach has been suggested is also called as triple bottom line solutions. So, when we say triple bottom line solutions, we have to design something which is good for the environment. We should not pollute the environment too much. It should be good for economics. The economics has to work. It has to be cost effective. If it is too costly, say something you design which is very, very good for the environment, but at the same time it is so much costly that only a fraction of the population can afford it. So, then there is no point making those product, because the product will be there, but uh, unless say, lots and lots of people can use it, because uh, they can afford it, then there is no, there will be no real impact in the environment. People will still be using the product which is not that uh, environmental friendly. So, it should be good for economics and at the same time it should be good for the company as well. The company should be able to uh, make profit out of that. So, because the profit is uh, essential. Uh, so, that is uh, they, they need to make profit, so that they can invest back into the economy. 
and it should be good for the society. So, it should be good for the society and uh, that is uh, it should not have too much of a like, like child labor issues or uh, human rights issues involved. So, those things are also there. So, that is why it is called triple bottom line. So, there are three arms like uh, three pillars one is environment other is uh, economics and third is social that is a society. So, these three pillars many times when you hear about sustainability people will say sustainability has three pillars or sustainability has three legs. So, those legs are environment, economics and society. We will in this course we will focus mostly on the environmental aspect we will touch a little bit on economics and society as well. So, same thing expressed in a different way. Uh, you can have environmental protection and resource conservation that is your uh, that is uh, your uh, part of the environmental aspect. Then you have economic prosperity and continuity which is your economic aspect and then your social well being and equality. So, that is your social aspect. So, these three together is what is is our sustainability aspect. So, again three pillars people, people will be what social that is the social aspect, it is a fair practice for all people does not exploit interest of separate parties based on money status or growth. It should not happen that all the hazardous waste is sent to a country sent to a poor countries or all the electronic waste being dumped in uh, Asia or Africa from the European as well as the American countries that is not that is not fair. So, that is uh, that is why we need to take care of those issues. Then planet it is the environmental aspect we have to manage the renewable and non renewable resources while reducing waste. So, make it more effective as you can you can see that happening already. So, if you if you remember uh, say 10 years ago or uh, 15 years ago when you had a desktop uh, the desktop used to weigh so heavy that uh, you need to at least have two people one people carrying the monitor and one people carrying the CPU. Now and the same thing with the laptops the initial laptops were so heavy now the laptops are getting lighter and lighter you can carry probably two or three laptops together in your hand if you if you have to. The same thing with the desktop you can one person can handle the entire desktop now because things are becoming lighter we are becoming more resource efficient and we are also going towards uh, non renewable uh, energy like uh, we are going for uh, sorry renewable energy we are using less and less of non renewable energy and at the same time we are trying to reduce the waste that is being produced and profit has to be made financial benefit has to be made and the benefit has to be shared with the society. It is not that few people becoming richer and richer and the rest of the country rest of the society it is getting poorer and poorer that is not sustainable as well. So, many times we engineers get the blame being the being of the part of the problem because we have created uh, our especially after second world war there has been so much uh, with the industrial revolution so many new products coming up so many new organic chemicals being synthesized and many of those chemicals many of those products have environmental implications. So, they are what we call as anthropogenic uh, pro anthropogenic uh, stuff they are not uh, biogenic biogenic is what is already present in the environment. So, anything biogenic mother nature has a mechanism to deal with those kind of material because it is a biogenic uh, there is a there is already a system in place when you make lot on lots and lots of these anthropogenic products or chemicals and other things and you dump it into the environment then our mother earth does not know how to handle it and it becomes a problem. So, burning fossil fuel and then you produce a lot of smoke which leads to uh, air pollution issues uh, burning uh, stuff in the end your uh, pollution vehicles. Now, the winter is coming as you will see in the many parts of the world during the winter months uh, in the especially Delhi, Beijing they get lots of news uh, where you see that uh, air, air pollution becomes a major problem. But at the same time we are also part of the solution we are the people who design the water treatment plant we design the wastewater treatment plant we are trying to recycle the product we are trying to design the recycling facility we are also trying to design electrical car electric car more efficient cars. So, engineers are also part of the solution. So, we need to be making things in much environmental friendly way now as we have been doing earlier, but at the same time. Uh, we, we cannot just uh, like although we, we do not have to feel bad that we are creating all these environmental issues we, we are creating solutions to those environmental issues as well. As the society will develop uh, these environmental issues do get, get created the bottom line is that we need to do it in a responsible way we, we should do it in a responsible way. So, that uh, things gets um, done in a way so that does not harm the environment. Uh, whenever the economic prosperity is there whenever new factories gets built in there will be some environmental implication, but we need to manage those environmental implications. So, there are some other examples as you can see here electrical car uh, hybrid cars solar panel 
uh, lots of solar panel, recycle asphalt, which is being used, uh, which is also being used in India, plastic to road, lot of plastic to road is being done in India as well. So, a lot of things are being made, uh, again solar panel, wind power. So, we are trying to remove this fossil fuel based energy to renewable energy and some countries, especially the western European countries are much ahead. India is also trying to do a lot of work in this area. So, as an engineer, we are also part of the problem, uh, we are also part of the solution. So, we need to design things uh, in a uh, in a better way. So, when you, we cannot, we cannot keep designing things in the same old way. Whatever the pictures you saw were some of the newer initiative over last 10 years, 20 years, maybe last two decades or two and a half decades. So, things are moving towards more sustainable stuff, but again many of, many of our design of uh, products, processes are still done in an old way. We need to start moving. So, being engineer of the future as probably you are, uh, you need to think differently. Now, you need to think differently when you try to design some stuff. Now, how, what, what you need to think differently? The traditional engineering design criteria is function, cost and safety. As you know, function is very important. Like for if you design for if you design a product, it has to perform that function. You design a if you just come up with a design of a product which doesn't uh, perform that function, it's of no use. Say if you want to make a uh, say even if this water bottle, if you want to design a water bottle and the water bottle cannot hold the water properly, if it's not robust enough that it gets broken down very quickly, nobody is going to use that. So similarly, any product you make has to be should be able to perform its function, its intended function. It should be strong enough, should do the function, should not be too costly. If it becomes too costly, it cannot, it goes out of the affordability chart and then it has to be safe. So, these things are what have, what have been the driving forces behind any design criteria. You look at any of the, your design criteria, whether you are a civil engineer, chemical engineer, mechanical engineer, electrical engineer, these are the three basic criteria that you do function, function, cost and safety. Now, we need to add some more criteria uh, to become it more what we know as sustainable engineering. So, sustainable engineering design criteria, we need to have these three from the top which is uh, has to be there plus we need to look at what is the impact on the environment, how much uh, pollution it will create, how much while making it as well as while it is being used. What will happen to the product when it is not being used anymore? What is thrown into a uh, waste, uh, waste uh, collection system? Can it be composted? Can it be easily recycled? So, we need to start having those concepts in there as well and impact on people. So, those are uh, so like what is the impact on people? Are we are using uh, like a human, uh, human rights violation or child labor issues? Those things and other uh, whether in general it is good for the society. So, these criteria has to be built in, in addition to the first three criteria we talked about on top, these three criteria needs, now these two criteria needs to be blended with these three criteria to come up with a better design. Now, questions, so when you try to do that, what are the questions you need to ask about, about any design you do? Number one could be, well it, can it be made from recycled material? Of, again, remember that it has to perform its function. So, you, you cannot lower the quality of the product by making it environmental friendly. You have to keep the quality of the product intact, but at the same time you have to look at okay, how to have less environmental harm. Can it be made from recycled material? How much energy it will use? Can we make it more energy efficient? Which you can see, which you see already things are moving earlier. Uh, you would have uh, uh, like a, the things uh, are becoming more energy efficient. You, you see all those energy star if you buy new refrigerators, new TVs and other stuff, they come up with this energy star, they say that it is more, it say it consumes this much less energy and as opposed to the previous uh, product in that category. Can it be powered by battery or solar cell? Can we use that? Will it be able to be recycled at the end of its useful life? Can we recycle that? And does it have any toxic material present? If it uh, toxic material is present, can we get rid of those toxic material by using some other material which is less toxic or possibly uh, not toxic at all? And, uh, and like what will happen if it is a toxic material, how to better manage it when it goes to the disposal stream? What, uh, what will be the way to manage the material? So, there are uh, sustainability indicators and metrics for engineering design and uh, there are 
what criteria can we use to compare two engineering design to determine which is more sustainable. So, there are different some examples are here hum, like a material use, energy use, water use, solid waste generation, ability to be recycled, emission generation, toxic release, land impact. So, this list can go on and on. So, what we do as part of the life cycle analysis is we try to quantify all these different parameters that you see over here. So, these parameters we are trying to quantify as part of an LCA exercise which you will see when we go to the week 2. I will show you several examples of how LCA is done and you will see that in more detail. So, kind of summarizes for the last 4 or 5 minutes that I have been talking about. There are 3 pillars of sustainability economic, social, environmental. In economic is all looking for profit. We are looking at the profit on that side. Social we are, we are kind of worried about the people. Environment we are worried about the planet. So, where these three, uh, this is a Venn diagram as you probably know, when there is where we have these three Venn diagrams are meeting together is what is known as your sustainable. So, that is a solution which comes under this particular area is our sustainable solution. Anything over here is equity, it has overlaps between profit and people. Anything over here is eco efficiency, economically it is good, environmentally also it is good and anything at the below social and environmental is livability. So, it is good uh, for environment, it is good for social. So, it is good, but, but anything which will really work taking all three into account is, no, is our sustainable. So, in the business community sustainability is coined the three bottom line expressing the industry has to expand the traditional economic aspect to, in, to incorporate environmental and social dimensions to create a more and sustainable business. So, that is what uh, it is. So, based on uh, that so far. So, in terms of again uh, since we are kind of in the middle of the week I wanted to re uh, emphasize on what is the learning objective of uh, this particular course and also for this particular uh, week is we need to look at what is the concept of life cycle. That is what we am trying to uh, explain and what are the different uh, various stages uh, related to assessment of the product as I, as I gave you example like uh, just a, a before there are different parameters we need to look at. What is the, what we have to look at the complexity of the life cycle, how complex uh, is the life cycle even for simple products. So, I will give you some examples and you will see that. Explain why environmental problems like physical products are complex and they require broad thinking uh, and boundaries that include all stages of life cycle. And, uh, and also we will look at what kind of outcomes we might expect if we fail to use the life cycle thinking. So, this is a kind of a the learning object like big picture learning objective I would say for this particular course. So, again uh, the concept I kind of explained to you why LC well like what is the sustainability. Now, we will look at why LCA as the sustainability definition told us what we want is we want to meet needs of the present without compromising the ability to meet future needs. So, whenever you try to do that there will be some uh, we will be some obstacles, there will be some corporate and social pressure, there will be some government and regulatory barrier, there will be uncertain objectives, goals, things are not clear, there is no lack of tools. Now, for example, you want to say uh, I, may I come up with this process B now which is better than process A we have been using so far in my factory and but process B will meet the needs of present without compromising the ability of future. But then how we can as an engineer you know we need, we, we need to look at the numbers. Great if we can uh, process B is better, but how much better and how we can say that process B is better. Sometimes our intuition is not a sufficient framework for analysis. If there should be an intuition yes this sounds to be like anything when we say we can recycle uh, or uh, this is yeah that sounds great we are going to recycle. But if you want to recycle in the process of recycling, if you are ending up using a lot of water, lot of energy and lot of material and uh, as compared to what is needed for making a virgin material, you are probably not environmental friendly and there are situations like that too. So, in when we do this LCA exercise, when we do this LCA life cycle assessment, what it does it is a systematic method of comparing products, policies and also I would say processes. So, you can compare and in a in a uh, like a numerical way as well and then this is a and then we need to look at the cost and the environment cost is also important 
we need to look at the life cycle cost, uh, not only cost in a short term basis, but a long term basis. This is a course which is based out of uh, like a sustainability concept. So, we will look at uh, the sustainability aspect as well, which is uh, which what LCA is a tool for measuring sustainability. We will look at uh, the different definitions, but in general it refers to economic, social and environmental issues. Cost is also one part, uh, we need to understand the other parts as well. And LCA as I said is a kind of thing to help us uh, to do this. An ultimate goal at the end of this course, those of you who are taking this course, uh, if I can get you at least thinking like in a life cycle way for any problem, does not matter which background you come from and in any sphere of your life when you look at those uh, problem, you start thinking in a life cycle perspective. Life cycle means when you look at in totality, look at in a whole, a wholesome, uh, in a from going from very beginning to the very end, from cradle to grave. So, if you can get that, that I think would be a very good uh, achievement for me uh, in terms of instructor for this course. So, life cycle, it is not a new term, it, we have been using it in biology term for quite some time. Uh, you have heard about life cycle of a honey bee for example, life cycle of frog, life cycle of these and that uh, in, a, in your biology class, uh, probably in your uh, primary school and middle school. And uh, those who are biologists, you all you might be looking at working on this area as well. So, when we talk about life cycle, we talk about uh, things from very beginning from the seed, you have your seeds and then from the seed. Uh, you get the seeding and you get the plant, the plant, plant goes up, you make some product from the product from the fruits. Again you have seed and then cycle keeps on going on and the whatever is the rest goes into the environment and the environment uh, take care of that. So, and the cycle continues. So, from birth to the end in a human life concept from our very beginning like when we are born uh, to our death. So, that is why many times you hear the term cradle to grave. Cradle is when the baby is born it is put in a cradle and grave is uh, when somebody dies it they go they are buried into the grave. Since the concept came from uh, western countries many people get gets buried over there as, as opposed to uh, like a cremation that we do over in uh, in uh, India for more like for more some of our uh, depending on which uh, part of uh, uh, like a religion or other things you belong to. But again the basic concept is from the very beginning to the very end. So, that is the life cycle. So, life cycle of a product that is as I said also known as cradle to grave begins with the raw materials production and extends to manufacture, use, transport and waste management. So, you go from material extraction all the way to waste management. It and as you can see over here from the material extraction, material processing, manufacturing, use, even for waste management, all these are then can go into that orange box which is uh, listed which is uh, called design. So, the input from all these can go into the design of the product. Same thing when you try to in terms of the waste management, you want to reuse it, you want to remanufacture, you want to recycle and you can put these things back into the into the same supply chain, your reuse can go back into the use, remanufacture can go to manufacturing, recycle can go to material processing and if we can come up with a product or a process where we can reduce this waste being generated or whatever is the waste generated, we can recycle it back, that is very good, we are, we are having minimum environmental impact. So, this whole concept where you are trying to take this waste management to waste material, but many, many places we do not even call them waste, they are actually resource. Uh, we, uh, the office of waste management has been renamed as office of resource management now. So, this resource can be put back into the system, that is the concept of the circular economy. You hear that term a lot these days, circular economy, where your whatever is the waste, you, you extract the resource, put it back into the supply chain. So, that is your circular economy concept. So, product life cycle thinking, life cycle thinking expands uh, the traditional focus on manufacturing process incorporating various aspect. You look at the entire life cycle, you start from uh, your extraction of raw materials from the top over here as you can see extraction of raw material goes to design and production, packaging distribution, use and maintenance, reuse and recycle. So, the reuse can come back here, then your recovery that can go into the recycling materials components and extraction of uh, again part of it which cannot be reused, cannot be recycled goes for incineration and disposal. 
So the producer becomes responsible for the crop for the for the product from cradle to grave. So for, so to, and and has for instance uh, to develop products with improved performance in all phases of the product life cycle. So that's how the concept of this life cycle thinking is coming. So the goal is the main goal of the life cycle thinking is to reduce resource use and emissions from and to the environment as well as to improve the social performance uh, in various stages of product life. In this way, the companies can achieve cleaner products and process, a competitive advantage in the marketplace and an improved per platform to meet the needs of changing business climate. So life cycle thinking and pollution prevention, again, as you can see over here, you don't have to read the whole slide. It essentially comes from this three, six RE philosophy. So that's the six RE philosophy. What are those six RE? Rethink, reduce, replace, recycle, reuse, and repair. So if you can design your product taking this six RE philosophy, you will move towards pollution prevention and more sustainable, um, more sustainable uh, uh, products. So if you look, so so far, what if you just kind of summarize what we talked about that in last 30, last 25, 26 minutes. Sustainability is a concept, it's a newer concept, highly used and highly abused. We need to be very careful in terms of uh, how, what is the sustainability means and what does it really means for engineers or scientists. What are the three pillars of sustainability? We talked about that, social, economical and environmental. What is LCA? LCA is a tool which will helps measure this, measure the sustainability parameters. LCA as such is measures the environmental parameters. For social parameters, there is a, the concept is actually gets more complex because social norms and social values changes from place to place. So the social, uh, our social uh, LCA, it is still a protocol which is being developed. Yeah, the protocols are actually out there now. You can uh, download it from the CTAC UNEP website. Uh, but, uh, for the social LCA and the social LCA there are uh, ways of doing that uh, and then there is a way of doing uh, life cycle costing analysis as well which is a LCCA. So but since this course is focused on life cycle analysis which is the environmental aspect we will cover mostly LCA part but we will also look at social and LCCA as we make progress. So in terms of big picture when you look at try to have this life cycle thinking and pollution prevention. So what, what was happening earlier is as an environmental engineer or as an environmental professional, our role used to come towards the end of the life of product or when the pollution has already been created. So we were more looking at, uh, we were more trying to solve the problem from an end of pipe approach. But now we are trying to get into the design of the product. We are trying to get into design of process and try to, uh, try to put input there in terms of, okay, how you, should, how you should design this product or how you should go about this process so that the environmental impact is minimum. And that's the kind of concept of life cycle thinking coming up where you look at the things in a totality, not only in a silos approach, but a big picture broad approach. And there are different philosophies out there in terms of the eco design and eco design principle and we'll come back to some of these I think in the third week. Where, but this uh, rethink, reduce, replace, recycle, reuse and repair, those kind of things you hear again, again and again in terms of the life cycle thinking and pollution prevention. So with that, uh, we'll conclude this part of uh, this, uh, uh, this module, which is the third module for the week one, and then we'll carry over our discussion in the week uh, and the fourth module. Thank you.